You're listening to the Fort Erie Podcast, your local source for upcoming events, hot new listings, and bite-sized interviews with business and community leaders. Here's your host, Brent Jones. Hey there, Fort Erie. You're listening to Season 3, Episode 4 of the Fort Erie Podcast. It is Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. I hope you had a safe and spooky Halloween. I'm your host, Brent Jones, and I'm not sure if you heard... But there's an election happening today south of the border. I'm kidding, of course. Of course you have heard about this election, but we're not going to talk about that today. Instead, I'm going to have two guests on the show, the first of which will be Keith McTagg, co-owner of Planks Canada in Crystal Beach. But uh, a bit of a request for help to start this episode, if I may. Uh, The month of November is here, and in many circles, it's also known as the month of Movember, with an M, Uh, Basically, a fundraising month in which men around the world grow a mo or a mustache in support of men's health issues like suicide prevention, testicular cancer, and prostate cancer. I am participating in Movember this year and hoping to raise $500 or more. And yes, I've lost my signature beard. (laughs) I'm now three days into growing what will most likely become the world's ugliest mustache. Anyway, every little bit helps. Please check out the show notes below this episode and click the link to donate now to this worthy cause. So let's get right into it. Here's what's making news in Fort Erie this week. First and foremost, the Fort Erie SPCA is reviewing its operations according to the board president. So in a recent statement, the Fort Erie SPCA president, Dr. Art King, said the board had decided to look into the complaints raised earlier this year by former employees and volunteers at the shelter. He added that uh, plans are to keep the community informed on any changes that may come as a result of this probe. Next, you may have noticed the culvert replacement happening along Pettit Road in Fort Erie. Like any other part of town infrastructure, culverts have a finite lifespan and they need to be replaced from time to time. When town uh, workers have finished replacing the culverts, uh, homeowners' driveways will be returned to their previous state. So for instance, in the event a paved driveway ends up being partially torn up, the town's paving contractor will be deployed to make any necessary repairs. All right, here's my pick this week for a hot new listing. Uh, I want to highlight the new listing at 302 Lakewood Avenue in Crystal Beach. This property is listed by Don Kendrick at Royal LePage NRC Realty, and it features four bedrooms, three bathrooms, more than 2,000 square feet of living space on a lot 90 by 72 feet. This home has a fully finished basement. It's less than 30 years old, and it's listed for $539.9. Check out the link in the show notes below this episode for more information. All right, let's head on over to the Fort Erie Questions and Answers Facebook group and see what Fort Erie residents are talking about this week. Uh, Russell says, rumor has it that Pizza Hut is coming back to Fort Erie. Is this legit? Most users underscored that although it would be nice to have a Pizza Hut here in Fort Erie again, it's only a rumor at this point, but one person commented that they saw Pizza Hut signage in the windows next to the Money Mart on Garrison. I guess time will tell on this one. We don't have a definite answer right now. Uh, Sarah says, I need to purchase some new winter tires this year. Please let me know the best place to go in the Fort Erie area. There were quite a number of different responses, but the two most common local answers that I saw were both Birdie Tirecraft, Birdie Tirecraft in Fort Erie and Birdie Tirecraft in Stevensville, either location. So I think that'll just about do it for now. Now it's time for my interview with Keith McTagg. And we are back. I am joined here by Keith McTagg, product specialist and knowledge base, he calls himself, of Planks Canada in Crystal Beach. Keith, welcome to the show. Hey, Brian. How's it going? Man, I'm doing great. Thanks for spending some time with me on a dreary, rainy morning. I appreciate that. For sure. For sure. Nice to have you. Well, let me start by asking you the same question I really ask all my guests, which is what makes Fort Erie and Crystal Beach specifically such a great place to live and work? Well, uh, Crystal Beach specifically, I would have to say uh, the vibe. Um, you drop into the valley in Crystal Beach here, and uh, you're kind of in a different world. You know, of course, geography doesn't lie, so you got the lake, always going to help. But uh, the, the village here, the people, the businesses, um, everyone's just here to have a nice, relaxing time, and uh, you really feel it when you come down. Sure. Um, did you did you grow up in this area originally? I did. I did. Crystal Beach, Ridgeway. 
Um, uh, lived in a few other places in and, ar- in and around, but uh, the majority of my life, Crystal Beach and Ridgeway. And uh, it's crazy, the, the growth, really. It's, sure, it's uh, sure. growing up in Crystal Beach. You just heard the tales of the old park, how good it was, how good it was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, since we've opened the business here, uh, all we keep hearing about is how good it's going to be. So it's uh, it's nice to see Crystal Beach finally get its reckoning and, and come back around. I totally agree. Now, now, what made you and your wife decide to start a business here? Oh, well, um, my wife is is a strong believer in Crystal Beach. She um, she moved here as quick as she could. I think she was 18, 19 years old, uh, got a house down here. And uh, within the first month, she actually had her employer move down here because they fell in love with the town when she brought them down. Um from there, uh, everyone she met in town, she just kept saying how awesome the beach was. And, um, and so it's just a place in her heart. And when, uh, when it came time for, uh, for her to look at starting her own business, she thought, well, I've already had a business or I've already worked up, brought a business to Crystal Beach, did that for a few years. And um, why not? I live in Crystal Beach. It's, it's such a great community, growing community. Um, We saw some development happening on Derby Road, and uh, she thought it was the perfect time to dive in. The rest is history. (laughs) Well, tell listeners a little bit about Planks Canada. I mean, what are you guys all about? What do you sell? For people who maybe aren't familiar with your store, what's going on here? Well, uh, you know, Planks Canada started off as as just uh, Ashlyn's image to to make products that she wanted to make. Um, So she uh, has been in many industries. Uh, She was a haberdasher for eight years. Uh, She ran a promotional um, industrial embroidery company. So she had uh, had her fingers in just about everything. Of course, uh, uh, schooling in fashion design. Um, And after making hats for eight years, she wanted to make other things and she wanted to make everything. So that kind of is what started it. Her just wanting to make as many things as possible. And uh, from there, we both uh, have a a strong belief in... uh, catering and uh, taking care of the environment and, uh, you know, ethical products, fair trade, stuff like that. So it kind of, uh, once she overextended herself in the making, so we knew exactly which direction we had to go, which was ethical. We made products and uh, environmentally friendly stuff. So we do a lot of environmentally friendly fabrics from organic cottons, recycled plastics for the polyester to uh, your home stuff. We have beeswax food wraps that we make with local beeswax. And, uh, and yeah, that kind of uh, points us in the direction. And of course, Planks Canada is, is key. Planks Canada, because we try to find Canadian made stuff wherever possible. So us making it, of course, is in Canada. Good old pandemic really helped with that. We, uh, we've went from, I think, uh, 300 items on the website to over a thousand. So there's uh, plenty to look at these days. Well, we'll talk more about the pandemic in a second for sure. Uh, but what I wanted to jump in now is something I like to call the rapid fire question round, which is not as stressful as it sounds. I see you freaking out a little bit. Uh, basically, we'll put 60 seconds on the clock. I'm going to ask you some fun kind of trivia via questions about yourself just a chance for listeners to get to know you a little bit better so Excited. let's it, it is <laughs> let's start with this uh, first answers into your head just blurt it out if you could hang out with any cartoon character who would you choose bart simpson if you could choose your age forever what age would you want to be oh uh 24 and a half <laughs> it's very specific if you were to change your name what would you change it to carl Carl, all right. If you could meet any living person for dinner, who would you pick? Living person? Hmm. Um, you know, probably uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, okay. What's your most used emoji? That would have to be the smiley face with the blushing cheeks. The blushing cheeks? <laughs> I like the teeth one personally, but nice. uh, would you rather, if you had to choose a superpower, would you prefer invisibility or flight? Have to go with flight. Me too. Would you rather live where it only snows or where the temperature never falls below 100 degrees? Where it, where it only snows. Minus 25 is my favorite temperature. Okay. And lastly, <laughs> cats or dogs? That's that's a hard one. Um, it would have to be uh, cats over little dogs, but dogs over cats. <laughs> okay. I, I almost feel like you, you knew that question was coming. You had a very good answer ready for it. Well, nicely done. You survived the rapid fire question round. So let's talk a bit about COVID-19 and how, how that's impacted your business this year and Crystal Beach in general. Well, um, it definitely slowed things down. Um, I guess the, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, how quiet the actual beach was down on the sand, which uh, as a local resident was a, a little bit of a treat, a throwback to the old days for sure. Um, but uh, 
as a business owner, it was uh, definitely a different vibe from the last couple summers, for sure. So the, the you know just last year in particular, every day we had people from you know Texas, from Florida, from British Columbia, from Quebec, all over the place. Even some people from Europe uh, last year I was bumping into Germany and and uh, and Sweden and stuff like that. But uh, this year was a little bit of a different vibe. It definitely started off slow once we got back open in June. But um, the locals were, were were proud to support. You know, they uh, they would they would try to come out. Uh, I would see people every day. Um, people trying to to shop local. I've never heard that said so many times. I want stuff made in Canada. I want to shop local. You know, I'm, I want to support the local restaurants. So so it really uh, really was a lot of great community support that, that really helped. And um, as things started to uh, get a little more comfortable for people. Uh, you know, moving into to late August and, and even September, we're starting to see um, a little bit of tourism happening. I know the, the B&B scene's still been rocking in Crystal Beach. So, uh, you know, people from the GTA, Hamilton, even Quebec uh, coming down and, uh, and and doing a little shopping and stuff like that. And uh, and of course, got to love the, the Canadian uh, manners. Everyone's uh, been really respectful and everything like that and uh, keeping distancing. And, uh, and of course, uh, very interested in, in supporting local and Canadian. Well, and you know, I find that's just a trend for the area, you know, people in Crystal sure. Beach, especially love to support Crystal Beach, you know, just the, just kind of definitely the way it goes. Crystal Beach just won't, won't, won't stay down. It just keeps on going. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I appreciate your energy, Keith. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. No problem, friend. It was a pleasure. Welcome back, everybody. As always, I'll be concluding today's episode with some upcoming community events. But first, uh, time for my second guest. I asked my friend and client, Jake Alamang of MSNR Plumbing, to join me for this week's episode. Jake happens to be a longtime listener of this podcast, and he's got a couple of tips for Fort Erie residents on how to prepare your home for winter now that the colder weather is arriving. Um, So the number one thing you got to do if you're going to be uh, uh, winterizing uh, your home there, is to shut off all your outside faucets via the supply valve. Now, the supply valve is just inside uh, the home, located where all the garden hose beds are, uh, are located on the outside. So make sure after you shut off the supply valve, uh, you actually open up the faucet outside, letting your residual water drain out. Leave it open over the winter, too. Uh, there's no reason to close it. It'll be off. Um, and the second thing that's not really uh, talked about much is some discharge lines. If you've got a sump pump in your home, your discharge line runs outside, uh, away from your home. And a lot of times it gets uh, uh, blocked at the end of the outlet. Make sure there's no uh, uh, grass or leaves or anything obstructing the outlet on that pipe so that it can free flow, uh, uh, flow freely. Excuse me. Um, so the, uh, if the sump line isn't, is blocked or if it's back slope, then it could potentially freeze. And then your sump pump won't be able to get the water out of your basement. Okay, let's wrap things up for today with a peek at what's happening this week in Fort Erie. First, the Ridgeway Lions will be having their pasta dinner at the Crystal Ridge Community Center. It's uh, takeout only, however. This is coming up uh, November 5th, this Thursday, from 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. The Village Church in Stevensville has their Youth Alpha program happening also Thursday, November the 5th, starting at 7 p.m. The Fort Erie Legion is hosting Fish Fry Fridays uh, this Friday, of course, November the 6th at 3.30 p.m. The Sanctuary Center for the Arts in Ridgeway is hosting a yoga and sound bath guided journey. That is coming up on Saturday, November the 7th, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Tickets are available for purchase online. Again, for this event and all events, check out the show notes below this episode. And just lastly, Casa Hugo is hosting their weekly music trivia night. Uh, That is happening Sunday, November the 8th, beginning at 7 p.m. All right, Fort Erie, I'll be back at you next Tuesday morning with a brand new episode. This new episode will be featuring the Bridgeburg gent himself. My guest will be Mike Daigle of Mike's Hair Studio and the Bridgeburg Gentleman's Shop. Until then, so long for now, Fort Erie. Take care. You've been listening to the Fort Erie Podcast with your host, Brent Jones, a sales representative with Remax Niagara Realty Limited Brokerage. Follow at Buy with Brent on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates. Subscribe to the Fort Erie Podcast on popular platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and catch a new bite-sized episode every week. Until next time.